In 2018, we left all we had ever known behind in Florida to make our way to Alaska in an attempt to drive our truck camper from Alaska to Argentina. We made it to the top of the world and turned south only to confront one challenge after another. But along the way, we fell in love with the road and realized that our call to wander would need an RV with a little more space. So we sold our truck camper and purchased a 22-year-old Class C motorhome that needed just a little bit of TLC. This is the story of how we spent six months remodeling our new home on the road. Hey, hey, hey. This is my day. Welcome back. This is Chris getting ready to procrastinate as much as I possibly can. Lindsay's off working since I quit my job. The RV is my job. Um, and I can't put off things that need to be done any more than I've already put them off. And let me tell you what, gentlemen, since I'm a guy, I don't, I can't really relate to the, to the female side of things, but I've felt like a first date was happening with this sofa and with the composting toilet. Like, you know how you sit around and you think about that first date and you're like, yeah, this is going to go so great. And maybe you're like crazy and you think like, I'm going to marry this girl. I just got to get through this first date. And so you like see what's beyond, you see the finished product and you're like, yep, that's how it's going to go. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. So I've been thinking about the sofa like that. I've been so optimistic. I've been like, oh yeah, I'm going to build this thing. It's going to be great. I've watched YouTube videos. I've got all kinds of courage. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm going to, I'm going to meet her. We're going to have a great time. Everything's going to be fantastic. And then we can move on to the next date and then on to the next date. And those next dates for me are all the other projects I got to do. If I can just get through this first one and I see how it's going to go, I can see it's beautiful. It's finished. It's amazing. It's going to be awesome, but it's not done yet. It's not even started. I haven't even drove up to pick her up yet. I did, however, go buy all my wood that I think I'm going to need, all the screws that I think I'm going to need, the hinges I think I'm going to need. I think I got all that stuff. I got the saw all set up. Everything's ready. So like I'm all dressed up. I got my, my cologne on. I, I'm, I'm looking sharp. I just shaved. Everything's great. I'm, I'm ready to pull up to the door, knock on the door and, you know, see what happens on the first date but I'm not there yet. The thing about this sofa is it's got to fit stuff underneath it. Stuff that's already there, which is the heater. We've got our heater that's there and it's got two vents that come the way the old sofa was directly out underneath the sofa, had a little vent covers and boom, it pushed hot air out into the living room, which makes sense on a cold night. That'd be nice to have. It also is going to have our batteries and our 2000 watt inverter that we're going to be putting down there. And that's going to take a special build. I've got to build a special box for that. And it has a nice little metal strip, almost perfectly against the wall that has the seat belts uh, connected to it. Why is that a big deal? Well, I could take them out, no problem, but we want to have seat belts. There's just two of us, but maybe someday you're going to be riding along with us. Do you want me to hit the brakes because a black bear runs in front of me and you go flying through the windshield backwards? Like, I don't want that. So we want to keep our seat belts that we can use for the bench or the couch that I'm building. So I don't want to take that strip out, but that's there. And then of course there's all the wires. So right now we've got three wires coming up from underneath the camper. One is the alternator wire. So as we're driving, it's tied into charging the batteries. The second is the generator wire. So when we turn the generator on, it charges the batteries and connects to the whole power system. And the third is the battery itself. We're gonna move our batteries inside. We want a nice compact space. They're AGM batteries. They can be enclosed. They can be mounted sideways if we wanted to. Um, but I gotta build a box for those and mount our 2000 watt inverter. So I've got a really short wire run there. Um, that's a whole separate talk about the power system because there's a lot to consider when choosing and installing your power system. So all that's got to fit in this tiny little space. Oh yeah, and then there's the fact that the driver's seat reclines and has to recline for big old me. Lindsay can probably move the seat up and it wouldn't interfere, but the chair will interfere with um, building a perfectly rectangular couch. So all those great YouTube videos out there, and I will direct you to them because they're amazing videos. They've inspired us. They've given us ideas to take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. 
all that doesn't apply because I don't have a flat blank canvas to work with. I am working with a, what I will call a cluster. But for me, I have to deal with what I have. And so I am not going to let it entirely constrain me, but those are the constraints that I'm working with. I'm not moving all the wires. They gotta go somewhere. So if it's not there, it's gonna be somewhere else. And so with the sofa, we thought this is a great way we can cover up the wires functionally, have access to them. The idea is the sofa, we're gonna be able to actually lift up um, and get underneath if I need to move things around or something trips or whatever. Um, but at the same time, we're not moving everything. Um, that heater is in its home. That's where it belongs. It doesn't belong anywhere else. There's nowhere else that I can put that heater. Now you know why I've been hesitant to knock on the door. I know it's gonna be a great date. I know it may be awkward, particularly at first, trying to get into it. There's gonna be some hiccups. I might say something that like is, is awkward. Ask Lindsay about those moments. She probably doesn't remember um, when we first started dating, but there's gonna be those awkward conversations where you're like, oops, I said, I said something. And, uh, and so anyway, those are gonna be the hiccups that I face. And those are my dogs barking. I gotta go get them. So that was probably a pleasant interruption and I should take note that that means I need to stop talking to you and I need to get started on this. I just need to knock on the door, say hello. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll knock on the door and open it up and on the first date she'll kiss me right off the get go. This sofa is going to be one, ideally, well it has to be, it's going to be a pull out. So we're gonna have these slats that will allow us to pull out the sofa. So it'll expand a certain way to turn into a bed. And it's going to be able to lift up so that I can access underneath in the event I need to change something with the wiring, with the batteries and or swap out batteries at some point. So what that means is that it's going to have a lot of moving parts and it's going to take up a fair amount of space when it's fully installed. Okay, so metaphorically speaking, I knocked on the door and I saw that her dad was coming and I turned and I ran like hell. <laughs> In reality, I created this cool little box. It's gonna fit the batteries really, really well. I'm just having trouble figuring out where everything's gonna go inside the camper, where this stinking inverter is gonna go. It's huge. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna build a cover for the batteries. And I'm gonna leave this box open, I'm thinking. And then I'm gonna build a separate little space to the side where I'll mount right here. I'll build another little box right here and then I'll mount the inverter right there. That's what I'm thinking, but I still don't know where it'll go if I can get it all done. So I'm gonna play around with that now. I did what I needed to do as a first step, which was I built a box for the batteries 
to see how much space they take up, which is quite a bit. I built space for the inverter and see how much space it takes up. It takes up quite a bit. And so that kind of lets me see where I am with building the whole couch. So I have my lid that I can put on here. So that'll cover that up. This will still be exposed. The inverter will be exposed. I was thinking about making like a roof that came over it, but there's no reason to do that. Uh, I don't think. If so, it's just another piece of plywood I gotta cut. Oh, just another piece. So one of the things that I found out is this was where I was going to make the widest part of the couch. But if I wanna have the heater come over here, it's gonna have to be a little bit wider. So we're looking at about 27 inches for the base of the couch. I don't think that's terrible. Um, it just depends on how I build it and how far the slats will then slide out because um, 27 inches times two is 54 inches. That's going to be quite a bit into the middle of the camper. But the idea is that we're only pulling this out when, you know, for a short period of time, um, when we're chilling or when we have guests or whatever. So that being said, if it comes out most of the way into the RV, it's not the end of the end of the world. All right, all right, all right. I am back. Had a refreshing day off yesterday. Afternoon, just hanging out and talking and not thinking about solving this problem or these problems with the camper. So I am back at it. Today is a work day for Lindsay as well with me here in the camper. So the metaphor gets a little weird now because I've invited my wife into this whole dating arrangement where I'm gonna go back and knock on the door again and see if, you know, on this first date, if, if we can make it work out. So that being said, sleeping on it was a good thing. It gave me time to rest my mind and think about how I wanted to approach what to me is the hardest part is that we're not working with a blank slate. So if I was starting from scratch, I would definitely design this different. So if that's what you're doing, if you're working with an empty space, an empty wall, Building this couch would be a breeze for you and it will be a breeze for you. So here's what I decided to do. I decided to grow a pair and I'm going to take off the wiring from the wall and I'm going to put my, my frame behind that. It's gonna skip up over and around the heater and then I'm gonna put a panel of plywood where all these wires are now plugged into the wall. I'm gonna make a false wood with the plywood inside what will be inside the um, couch. And then I'm gonna mount all the stuff to the plywood instead of mounting it to the wall, which will give me at least a about three and a half foot run of empty wall space. So I'll have that much working for me when I get started on this project. But what I did do was it was on the wall here. I unscrewed it carefully. I unscrewed this off the wall and I unscrewed this. I'm gonna put Basically, we're going to frame out with two by fours along the wall, and now I can go anywhere along here. We're still going to be resting. This is the seatbelt bar. We're still going to be resting wood on the seatbelt bar, but it's also going to be screwed into the wall. So it's going to be really secure. So this is the idea now. Maybe you can visualize like I can visualize better. We'll have a horizontal bar going across there, wooden beam and that's gonna be mounted into the wall. It's gonna rest on top of these supports that we put in. I think I'm gonna have, I don't know, three or four supports. In my opinion, I'm a big guy. I don't wanna break this thing. So I'm gonna build it. I'm gonna probably overbuild it, um, which is why I'm using two by fours instead of one by ones, which I've seen, or two by twos that I've seen people work with. Um, we're just gonna you know, add a little bit of weight, but it'll add the support for my big fat behind sitting on this couch. So I'm going to use two by fours to frame everything out. And then we'll have to skip over the heater and we'll have one final one in the corner over here. I am going to start working the plan. I've already um, taken the screws out and moved all the wires off the wall. So now I need to cut a couple strips of two by four, which are going to be our verticals going up and wait for Lindsay to help me figure out how far out we want to run the uh the couch because it's got to cover up our battery box which i'm sitting on right now it's got to cover this up which will tuck back inside of here and the line on the floor was where i made at 26 inches but i think we're going to go another inch or two out um, i'm going to wait for the professional consultation of my dear wife 
and her thumbs up and her thoughts because uh, again, it's not as simple if I were to build it out and it's better to build bigger because you can always cut wood back But you can't add wood without going to Lowe's not Home Depot to get your wood to redo it So I don't want to buy any more wood. I don't want to make wrong cuts and that for me is a problem I overthink everything if you haven't figured that out it keeps me from making dumb decisions at this point in my life But it also paralyzes me when I just need to make a cut now this board I cut it I looked at it before I cut it and I thought it was level and straight, but it's bowed like crazy. See there, it looks level, but way over here, definitely not. And it has nothing to do with the wood underneath there. Because I'm not working on a flat surface in a garage or a warehouse or a totally flat surface because I've got wood, carpet, and this um, seat belt rail, this metal, I've got several different heights and so I've got to be very careful about measuring. So what that means is that here is the level on top of the metal. Here's a different level on top of carpet. Here's a different level on top of the uh, plywood. And then there is this little bit right here. So this is a Chris job. It's going to get done. It's going to be nice. It's not going to be perfect. I'm telling you this quietly so Lindsay doesn't hear, but, um... You didn't hear that, right? Nope. Okay, so she didn't hear. It's gonna get done. I promise. It's gonna look great. It's just not gonna be perfectly level. I can I can see that coming right, right now. So, uh-oh. She thinks I'm up to trouble. Um, nothing. Uh -huh. Nothing, dear. Uh -huh. I'm just scheming how to make this work. I was trying not to take apart anything more than I had to. Um, so I've stripped down the heater. I took the vents off the side. I'm leaving them in the front because that's not a uh, bother right now. And I'm actually going to need to know later on. I'll show you. We're going to have to cut holes in whatever front covering we have for our sofa. But I needed to be able to access the, the back corner over here. And there's nothing I can do about these wires. Nothing I can do about that's the shore power, I think, coming in there. Um, so there's nothing I can do about that, but I am going to want to toenail some screws in here, right, right in there. And I couldn't do that without clearing all this stuff out of the way. So now what this will allow me to do is bring my drill in there once I figure out the exact dimensions. I'm going to consult with Lindsay. We're going to figure out how far out this is going to actually come. And then uh, I'm going to start building, I guess, out of that corner and work my way over getting close to really getting started. This is a technical side of things for my particular setup. If you, again, you, yours would go a whole lot quicker uh, if you don't have all this clutter in the way. Okay, fast forward about, I don't know, three hours, give or take. And there's been so much tinkering and so much uh, this, that, and the other. Again, it wasn't as simple as just building out a box where all the dimensions are the same. And then I just measure and cut, measure, cut, measure, cut. This was a lot of take a look at things, unplug things, move things here, shift this around, what about this, what about that? So I'm gonna explain to you what I have going on. First off, we have a dead dog. Dead dog? Nope, she's alive. That's good. So here's my box. This is the outline, the frame, for what we're gonna have as our sofa. If I was looking at it and it was all screwed in, I would say, wow, this is fantastic. But the reality is it is not screwed in. It is not screwed in. So here's what's going on. This heater was a pain in the butt. I tried to have a support as close as I could to the heater so I didn't have a big long gap. It's going to be about two feet, give or take. I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, but it does exist. Back here, we had the copper pipe that brings the propane into the heater. I had to notch out a piece of wood. That was fun. Um, getting the size of everything, the, the dimensions. So I've got a board in the back. It's not entirely necessary from some of the things that I've seen, some of the videos. But the idea is that this is going to be the very back. I wrote top so I didn't forget. This is the very back of the sofa and we're going to put our hinges 
onto this board that will allow us to lift the whole the whole thing up. And then the slats and the frame are actually right here. If I could have just built boxes like in some of the videos that I've seen, um, this frame that I just pointed out, the second um, second board there, would have been super easy to do. I would have just measured, cut, measure, cut, measure, cut. But as it is, I had to kind of create my own setup. So I'm gonna mount this board, which is the frame, into the one that I'm mounting into the wall. And that's gonna give it some extra security because I can't mount it to the floor. And then same thing here. And then this board will then go on top and that will be the back frame. Over here, kind of the same idea for the back side. I've got these wires running in here. So I ran them up over, I ran a two by four underneath there. And then I ran this board right here as support in between two exhaust vents that we have. And yeah, so that's sort of coming together. The other side, we had to determine how long we could be. As you can see, the driver's seat comes back to here. That's about as much room as I need to drive. So I'm gonna have to come up just a tiny bit, I think, um, when I'm driving. But then when we need to use a couch, we should be okay. And again, it's framed up. Now this thing in the middle, if you do recall, this is where the batteries are gonna go. This is a cluster because it's big, it's huge. As former president would say, it's huge. This is where um, our inverter is gonna go, mounted on here. And so this huge space takes up a lot of space, comes right up to there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two screws into the floor. I'm gonna hold that in place once I get it set up. Now the real joy was the wires. So this is where they're all coming out of underneath the camper. This is shore power coming in. And this is my positive bus over here. So one last thing I've got to do is I'm going to put a piece of plywood between here. And then I'm going to try to mount everything, all my electronics to that plywood. At that point, everything should be secure. I can go ahead and reconnect the battery so Lindsay can have light because we've been operating without power in the camper right now. Because it's always a good idea to unplug the battery anytime you're working with electronics, um, it's, uh, the electrical system. I unplugged shore power, obviously that'll kill you. Um, some people say, oh, it just gives you a good zap, but my luck, I'd touch it and I'd die. Um, and then the battery, same thing, it's just gonna give you a zap. You're probably not gonna die from uh, getting shocked from the battery, but I still don't want that. Had it just really quick in the past and that was enough. It's like, you know, as a kid touching the stove, done. So I disconnected the battery. I'll be able to hook the battery up once I get all of that wiring hooked up. So it looks good. What do you think, Lindsay? It looks good, I'm getting somewhere. Yeah. Can't wait to have a couch again. It looks good, but nothing is screwed into place. To get back to the metaphor, I think we're on the date right now, and it seems to be going okay. Don't know if there's gonna be a second date, don't know if I'm gonna get a kiss at the end of the night, but I do know that we're on this date and we're having a good time.
All right, so it is, it's late. I didn't achieve what I was hoping to achieve today, but what I did get done is awesome. We had the frame all set up. That was the hard part was planning that out. I want to show you a couple things um, about what the next steps are because we've had to go back and watch and try to piece together from other people's videos how to do this. And I want to show you what we're doing right now. So we're going to have these slats and they're going to go bloop, 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 all the way across there. And we're going to use a slat as the thickness in between each one. And so in order for it to pull out, I made the front, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the front steps, the front pull out. This is going to slide, which means we're going to have slats attached to this one that are going to pull out. Now, if we don't have anything connected on this side, they're just going to fall through as we pull out. So we've got another two by two over here that's going to be suspended just by these boards holding on to them. I'm going to screw in every other one of our slats is going to get screwed in back here. And then every other one is going to get screwed in to the front, which is stationary. And so that way, as we pull out, this is going to slide with all the slats that are attached to it, every other one. And then it'll go back when we slide it back. We're going to go mass produce some slats. we got to measure and make sure we got the right length. <laughs> I don't want to cut them too short and end up having to go buy more slats. Um, but we're going to measure and we're going to mass produce the slats and then we're going to be able to come in here and go every other one where one is going to be on here, one will be on there, one will be here, one will be there, and so forth all the way on down. This board right here represents what's going to be the front of our couch. couch. And that for us is different from other people that have a panel that goes across the front and that's it and that's all you see. For us, we've got these really cool, awesome uh, furnace things, mm -hmm. vents. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have them pop out of the front and then stay put. And then this will slide forward. So for us, we're going to have our planks going across in between here and then this will pull out and these will be open on the outside okay so we're going to call it a night we're going to go get set up for what is going to take place between now and when you see us right about now 